Bahamut is the longest running of all the summons in Final Fantasy, dating back to the very first game in the series before summons were even properly established. He has variably been known as the King of All Monsters, the King of All Summons, or, most commonly, the King of Dragons. While it is not always applicable in gameplay, story-wise he is regarded as one of the most powerful of all summons, if not the most powerful. The name Bahamut comes from Arabic and Hebrew mythology, where Bahamut is a great sea creature, and in the Arabic myths he supports the structure of the universe alongside the bull Kujata, and is so impossibly large the sight of him would drive men mad. So obviously, the Final Fantasy Bahamut has little to do with the mythological Bahamut. As with much of the original Final Fantasy, Bahamut is a concept borrowed from Dungeons & Dragons. In Dungeons & Dragons, Bahamut is the king of metallic dragons and a benevolent deity who champions justice to the wicked and altruism to the downtrodden. Bahamut is described as a great platinum dragon whose scales glow blue, and he has glowing blue eyes. He is said to know a wide variety of magic spells and has the typical breath weapons of dragons, but his most devastating ability is his Disintegration Beam, a blast of blue light from his mouth that obliterates his enemies. From the D&D Bahamut, the Final Fantasy Bahamut takes his basic appearance as a dragon, usually in various shades of grey, silver, and blue, and sometimes incorporating purple or indigo as well. His appearance has shifted over the years in specifics, but his core trait as a dragon in these colors has always remained. Bahamut occasionally has upgraded or alternate forms, usually when he appears in the world of Final Fantasy VII. The most recurring alternate form is Neo Bahamut, also first appearing in Final Fantasy VII. Bahamut's signature attack is Mega Flare. Mega Flare has been depicted as a wave of energy, a beam of light, or a series of explosive fireballs, and is usually bright blue or white in color, likely to call back to the disintegration beam of the D&D Bahamut. It deals heavy damage to all enemies, usually non-elemental and ignoring magic defense. A stronger attack, Giga Flare, is usable as a stronger version of Mega Flare. But while Mega Flare is usually exclusive to Bahamut, Giga Flare is often available to other enemies besides him. There is also a third, even more powerful version called Terra Flare. Bahamut occasionally has other Mega Flare variants as well, usually adhering to metric prefixes. Mega, Giga, Terra, Peta, Exa, and Zeta. And on some occasions, this has gone in reverse with the attacks Nano Flare and Pico Flare. Bahamut appears in the first Final Fantasy, which chronologically makes him the oldest Final Fantasy summon, predating the mechanic itself. Bahamut makes his home on the Cardia Islands with other dragons, and tasks the party to retrieve a rat tail from the Citadel of Trials as proof of their valor. In return, he grants the party their class changes. Of note in relation to Bahamut is one of the four fiends, Tiamat the Fiend of Wind. In Dungeons & Dragons, Bahamut's sister Tiamat is his arch-enemy, the queen of chromatic dragons with multiple heads. In Final Fantasy III, Bahamut makes his nest on Dragon's Peak, north of the village of Canaan. The Warriors of Light come to the mountain to find a man named Desh, and as they approach the mountain, Bahamut abducts them and takes them to his nest, where Desh is also being held. Bahamut attacks them at this point, but cannot be defeated and the player must flee from him, and the Warriors of Light escape by leaping off the nest. Later in the game, the player can return to encounter Bahamut at his lair and defeat him in battle to earn the right to summon him. Bahamut's summon attacks are Rend, which instantly kills an enemy, Aura, which grants haste to the party, and Mega Flare, which deals heavy damage to all enemies. In Final Fantasy IV, Bahamut is the god of Eidolons, making his home in the lair of the Father on the Red Moon. Once the player has been to the Fey March and defeated Leviathan and Asura, Bahamut will allow the party to challenge him and grants Rydia the right to summon him if they prevail. The method to defeat Bahamut varies between the 2 and 3D versions of the game. In the 2D versions, Mega Flare is so terrifically powerful that the most practical way to survive it is to cast Reflect on the party to bounce it back at Bahamut. But in the 3D versions, Mega Flare ignores Reflect, but is much less powerful, and a direct hit can be survived with proper preparation. In the subterrain of the Red Moon, the player can face Dark Bahamut as an optional boss, and it drops the Ragnarok, 
Cecil's ultimate weapon in the non-GBA and PSP versions. In the GBA and PSP versions that feature the Lunar Ruins, Lunar Bahamut is the boss of Kane's Lunar Trial, initially appearing as his doppelganger, Dark Kane. Both Dark Bahamut and Lunar Bahamut fight similarly to the original, though Dark Bahamut mixes things up by regularly casting the normal Flare spell as well as Mega Flare. In the PSP exclusive interlude chapter, the Rydia Impostor summons Bahamut when fought at the end of the chapter, until the real Rydia arrives and uses the Mist Dragon to snap Bahamut to his senses. In Final Fantasy IV's sequel The After Years, the mysterious girl comes to the Red Moon in the Lunarian chapter and petrifies Bahamut, seizing control of him for her own purposes. She summons him against Cecil to defeat him, and can summon him against the party when fought in Baron Castle. When fought in the depths of the True Moon, the mysterious girl summons Bahamut at the start of the battle, and he will instantly use Mega Flare to KO the party if Rydia is not present. If the player was able to awaken Leviathan and Asura earlier in the dungeon, they will appear during the fight and bring Bahamut to his senses and he will return to Rydia. Otherwise, he must be killed and Rydia will lose the ability to summon him. In the 3D version of the game, Luna Bahamut appears as an optional boss in the depths that drops the Ultima weapon. In Final Fantasy V, Bahamut awakens from a peninsula of land after the party retrieves their first ancient tablet from the Pyramid of Moor, and he can then be challenged at the summit of North Mountain. The sealed tome mentions Bahamut as a weapon used by the ancient peoples who sealed Anuo in the Rift, along with Leviathan, the magic's holy, flare, and meteor, and the twelve sealed weapons. In Final Fantasy VI, Bahamut's Magicite is won after defeating the boss Death's Gaze, who roams the skies in the world of Ruin and will attack the airship when approached. It is unknown how Bahamut was killed or how his Magicite ended up with Death Gaze. Setsa's slots ability can also summon Bahamut by lining up three dragon symbols. In the world of Final Fantasy VII, Bahamut has four alternate forms, referred to as Bahamut Strains by Professor Hojo in Crisis Core. The base Bahamut is acquired as a materia after defeating the Red Dragon in the Temple of the Ancients, and the Neo Bahamut materia is found in the Whirlwind Maze. If the player finds both of these materia, Bahamut Zero can be acquired by inspecting the blue huge materia in Cosmo Canyon, or dug up from Bone Village. Regardless of how it is found, the player must have both Bahamut and Neo Bahamut to get Bahamut Zero. While Bahamut attacks with Mega Flare, Neo Bahamut uses Giga Flare, and Bahamut Zero uses Terra Flare. Also note that the Japanese name of Bahamut Zero is actually Bahamut Type Zero, which is relevant to a much later game. In Crisis Core, Zack faces Bahamut in Benora and Bahamut Fury in Midgar when they are summoned by Genesis. Zack can face recreations of the two Bahamuts in the Hojo's lab missions, and then again in the Zack the Materia Hunter missions, where defeating him earns them their Materia and adds them to the DMW. Bahamut Sin is an incarnation of Bahamut featured in the film Advent Children, and is summoned by Kadash to attack the city of Edge. Continuing the naming scheme established by Bahamut Zero's Terra Flare, Bahamut Fury's attack is Exa Flare. This skips the prefix Peta, but Final Fantasy Record Keeper names Bahamut Sin's attack Peta Flare, thus restoring continuity. By this naming scheme, one could say that Bahamut Fury, with Exa Flare, is the strongest of the five Bahamut strains. In Final Fantasy VIII, Bahamut appears in the Deep Sea Research Center and the party must properly answer questions he poses of them and defeat ruby dragons he summons to be able to challenge him. When defeated, Bahamut is acquired as a guardian force. As a GF, Bahamut has no junction abilities, but several powerful passive abilities, including Forbidden Magic RF, which is able to refine Meteor and Ultima spells from items. In an homage to the original Final Fantasy, a palette swap of Bahamut named Tiamat is fought in Ultimecia's castle, and is able to use the ability Dark Flare, a variant of Mega Flare. In Final Fantasy IX, Bahamut is one of Princess Garnet's Eidolons, extracted from her by order of Queen Braun to use her Eidolons as super weapons against other kingdoms. Seeing her weapon supplier Kuja as a threat to her plans, Braun turns on him and summons Bahamut against him. 
Bakuja uses the Terran airship Invincible to take control of Bahamut and turns him against Bronze airship fleet, obliterating it and mortally wounding her. Kuja later summons Bahamut to raise the Kingdom of Alexandria, but Garnet and the summoner Aiko combine their powers to call the city's guardian Eidolon, Alexander, who defeats Bahamut. Later, Garnet is able to relearn Bahamut as a summon ability from the Garnet Jewel Accessory. In Final Fantasy X, Bahamut appears in the form of a hooded young boy before Titus, giving him information and wisdom throughout the game, and he also appears before Yuna in the game's sequel in the same form. As an Aeon, Bahamut is associated with Bavel Temple. His unique attack is Impulse and his overdrive is Mega Flare, and he is the only Aeon acquired during the main storyline that can break the damage cap initially. As with the other Aeons, Bahamut must be fought at the end of the game before the confrontation with Yu Yevin, and in the game's sequel under the control of Shu Yin. In the international and remastered versions, Dark Bahamut can be fought in Unaleska's chamber in Xenarkind after the initial battle with her. The Final Fantasy XI expansion, Chains of Promathia, prominently features Bahamut, known as an ancient and powerful avatar. He appears near the start of the questline to warn the adventurer that the Keeper of the Apocalypse is coming, and Bahamut is rallying his minions for war. The adventurer learns that the Twilight God Promathia is reviving, and intends to absorb the souls of all the beings of Vanadiel upon his return, giving him the power to destroy existence. Bahamut is gathering his Weums to destroy Vanadiel and deny Promathia the souls, but he is defeated by the adventurer. This game marks the first time Bahamut appears since the first Final Fantasy, where he cannot be obtained as a summon. As with other summons, Bahamut does not appear directly in Final Fantasy XII, but his presence is still very prominent. At the end of the game, Vayne activates a gigantic airship, the Sky Fortress Bahamut, and uses it to attack the Rebellion fleet. When Vayne is mortally wounded, Vanar merges with Vayne and grafts parts of the airship onto him, turning Vayne into a cybernetic creature with a dragon's head crest and large wings, evoking the imagery of Bahamut. This creature, known as the Undying, is the final boss of the game, and is able to use the attacks Mega Flare, Giga Flare Sword, and Terra Flare. In the sequel Revenant Wings, Bahamut appears as a more traditional summon, though with a humanoid design based in the Dragoon class. He is a rank 3 non-elemental flying summon, and is summoned by the Judge of Wings to break the Murak Kashuk Skysi into three separate islands. Final Fantasy XIII has Bahamut as Fang's Eidolon, manifesting from her in the fifth arc. Bahamut has a more humanoid form normally, and takes a form more like a traditional Weum or Dragon in his Gestalt mode, where Fang rides atop him. Bahamut specializes in powerful non-elemental attack, and its Gestalt mode finishing blow is Mega Flare. In Final Fantasy XIII 2, Caius is able to perform incarnate summoning to transform into Chaos Bahamut, and does so throughout the game. In the final confrontation with Caius, he absorbs the chaos of Valhalla and transforms into Jet Bahamut, accompanied by Amber Bahamut and Garnet Bahamut. Jet Bahamut is able to combine its powers with the other two to cast Exaflare, but it will be downgraded to Terra Flare or Giga Flare if one or both of them is KO'd when the countdown ends. Lightning Returns has Chaos Bahamut return as a separate being that aids Caius in the battle with him. In Final Fantasy XIV, Bahamut was a primal sealed in an artificial moon called Dalamud by the Allegan Empire long ago. In the present, a legatus of the Gallian Empire, Nail Van Darnus, attempts to bring Dalamud to Earth to wipe out the primals. Though Nail is defeated, his actions work to free Bahamut from within Dalamud. In the cinematic End of an Era that heralded the end of the original Final Fantasy XIV, Bahamut is unleashed and devastates Eorzea, setting the stage for the game's relaunch as a Realm Reborn, where the world has been drastically changed since it was last seen. In A Realm Reborn, the Binding Coil of Bahamut is an optional dungeon. This place is the remains of Dalamud that Bahamut reactivated to keep from fading away after Louisoy was able to defeat it during the Calamity, and it is in the process of regenerating. The party defeats its spirit form, Bahamut Prime, and Bahamut fades into the life stream. It is later revealed that Bahamut was one of the first brood, 
the first seven dragons sired by Midgar Soma, and he was killed by the Allegan Empire. Another of the first brood, Tiamat, was tricked by the Asians into trying to resurrect Bahamut as a primal, and this being was the Bahamut the player encountered. During the Final Fantasy XIII crossover event Lightning Strikes, the final boss is the Aspect of Chaos, a name given to Chaos Bahamut. In the world of Final Fantasy XV, Bahamut is the sixth and greatest astral, known as the Draconian and the Blade Keeper. He gifted the Crystal and the Wing of the Lucii to the Kings of Lucis, and granted the Oracle her powers and the Trident. Visually, Bahamut is depicted as a humanoid figure in draconian armor rather than an actual dragon, and the novel The Dawn of the Future implies he looks like the Founder King, Somnus. Near the end of Final Fantasy XV, Noctis meets Bahamut when he is pulled into the crystal, and Bahamut explains the origins of Arden and the Star Scourge to him before returning him to the world to destroy Arden. During the battle with Ifrit, Noctis summons Bahamut to aid him, and Bahamut attacks Ifrit with Ultima Sword. The multiplayer add-on Comrades also has the Glaives face Bahamut as the final boss. The DLC Episode Arden ends with Bahamut telling Arden his destiny is to face Noctis as the true king and be destroyed by him. Canonically, Arden submits to his destiny. However, the novel Dawn of the Future, based on cut plans for three more DLC packs, are an alternate version of events where Arden rejects his destiny. In this alternate timeline, Arden becomes too powerful for Noctis to defeat and the Star Scourge cannot be cleansed from Aeos, so Bahamut decides to destroy the planet with his ultimate power, Terra Flare, and start over. Through the combined efforts of the other Astrals along with Noctis, Arden, and a resurrected Luna Freya, Bahamut is destroyed and the crystal absorbs the Star Scourge from Aeos before shattering. In Final Fantasy Type-0, Bahamut is based on its Crisis Core design, and even seems to reuse its model and concept art, though modified to fit the general mechanical aesthetics of Type-0's Eidolons. Bahamut and the upgraded Neo Bahamut are only obtainable during a second playthrough of the game, and are able to use Mega Flare and Giga Flare, respectively. During the Battle of Judeca, Class-0 faces the Lassie Celestia, who transforms into the dragon Shinru Celestia and destroys them. But then, Class Zero's benefactor Aresia summons Bahamut Type Zero against Shinru Celestia, and players fight Shinru as Bahamut until its ultimate attack Terra Flare can be charged safely. In this game, Terra Flare has Bahamut Zero summon dozens of regular Bahamuts, and they bombard the target with Mega Flares dealing so much damage to Shinru Celestia that it continues to display even as the enemy dragon collapses and falls out of sight. Bahamut has appeared in many other spin-off titles, but usually doesn't have a critical role in the story. He appears as a summon in Final Fantasy Tactics, Four Heroes of Light, Dimensions, Dissidia NT, Theat Rhythm, Grave Exvius, and World of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy Record Keeper pits players against Neo Bahamut as a nightmare boss, and Theat Rhythm has Bahamut Sin as a boss. The spin-off series Kingdom Hearts has a dummied summon command for Bahamut, but unfortunately this seems to have been cut early in development, as no actual assets for Bahamut exist in the game and the command doesn't work. Thank you to everyone for watching, and thank you to all the content creators on YouTube from whom I have used gameplay footage. All credit to them for this footage. Please like, share, and subscribe. Try to raise the word, I'd love to get the view count up for this video. If you haven't previously watched my Odin video, you can go check that out. And let me know in the comments what creature or summon from Final Fantasy you'd like me to document next.